This video will review the Revit user interface, as well as introduce the Dynamo user interface. We will also take a look at commonly referenced panels, menus, terminology, and other components that we'll be using throughout this course. Some courses suggested for viewing prior to taking this course would be Introduction to Revit Architecture 2016, Conceptual Massing in Revit, and Structural Trusses in Revit. Not all of these components will be used specifically, however, a working knowledge of the various environments that we'll be using throughout this course would be essential. If you installed Revit per the default installation settings, you'll have an icon on your desktop. For this exercise, we'll be using Autodesk Revit 2016. Once you open the program, you should have a view that looks something like this, which is pretty close to the default. In the top left corner, the Revit symbol will be your access to all of the, the standard settings, export, save, uh, load, insert. Just to the right of that, you'll have a series of tabs in the dark gray bar. Architecture, Structure, Systems, Insert. All of these tabs are going to house panels that organize the tools that we typically use to create geometry. And by geometry, I mean the building components for our design. The large white space that takes up most of the user interface is just that. It's your workspace. This is where all the geometry we're creating is going to be placed, modified. Uh, we'll be able to see floor plans, sections, elevations. We'll be able to see 3D views. We'll be able to see legends and schedules. We'll also be able to see our sheets. All of this happens right there in the open white workspace. And if your default settings match mine, you'll have the properties panel as well as the project browser panel on the left side of your screen. If you do not have these two panels, go to the View tab under the Windows panel, and you'll see User Interface on the right side. Under the User Interface icon, you'll see a series of checkboxes that will allow you to either turn on or turn off different dialog boxes that will allow us to control the information that we're working with. It's important to note that when we work in Dynamo, the geometry we're generating isn't necessarily existing in the workspace. That means when I draw four walls or a series of components in Revit, that geometry technically exists in real space, or at least Revit's real space. Let's move into Dynamo now to explore the differences between the two workspaces. In order to install Dynamo, you'll have to download it from the web page. If you go to www.dynamobim.org, you'll be able to click the button in the top right corner which says Download. Once installed, you'll have to restart Revit if you have it open. Once it's restarted, if you go to the Add-ins tab, under the Visual Programming panel, you'll see Dynamo. Click the icon to open it. As I mentioned before, Dynamo is a plugin for Revit. And that means that it's going to open up as a separate window that lives over top of the Revit user interface. The main start screen has a couple of components that we should note. In the top left corner, we're able to create a new file, create custom nodes, or open existing files. Just below that, we have a list of recent files that were opened. And most notably, on the right, there are a couple of components to note here. There's a link to the Dynamo website. There's a link to the Dynamo discussion forum as well as a series of video tutorials. The primer is there, which has a lot of exercises that one could follow to get a more firm understanding of the program. I would like to make a special note about the Dynamo discussion forum, which is particularly active. The team of developers over uh, at Autodesk are actually quite passionate about what they do. And so one could expect to get a pretty swift response from the team if they post a question there. For this exercise, we're going to start off with a new file. Dynamo will bring you to the workspace. 
Similar to Revit, the workspace is a, a wide open area on the right side of the screen with a series of panels and tools on the left side of the screen. In the top left corner, you'll see your standard file edit view where you can save and open new files, where you can find help if you need it. Another thing that I would like to point out especially is the help file. If you click on the help menu and hover over samples, you'll see that there are a series of exercises that you could go through to explore the program further. I would highly suggest doing so. Direct your attention to the left side of the screen for a moment and let's take a look at what this library panel is. The interesting thing about Dynamo is that the commands are actually based on the .NET framework. For us as your typical Revit user that doesn't really mean much, but the library bar on the left is an extremely powerful user interface component. This is where we as the user can search through and explore all the different types of tools that Dynamo has. You can see that it's a lot more concise to what you saw in Revit where it was broken out into tabs and panels and you could visually see the icons for all the tools. Here it's actually listed much like your file structure. Uh, if you click on the arrows on the left side of Analyze Bulletin Core, you can see all the various tools that are available to you, and some of them even have subfolders that you can open up to gain more tools. By expanding the geometry menu, we're able to see that this is going to be where we find most of the typical types of geometry we create. Under operators, we can see that there are a lot of mathematical functions that are available to us as well. This is part of that data-driven component that I mentioned in the previous video. And also, if you open up Revit, it's important to note that there are options to select and modify view settings, analysis tools, uh, you can grab elements directly from the Revit model, and also form and modify views. All of these are just a hint at what Dynamo can actually accomplish and, and what types of information it can begin to process. The workspace on the right has a couple of different components to note. The first of which, and the most obvious to us as the typical user, is that there's a grid that's in our workspace. This grid is going to be the basis upon which we generate our geometry, the points or the sizes or the direction, anything like that. In the top right corner, you'll see a series of icons. These icons are important for us to understand. When you hover your mouse over the icon that is currently selected as blue, it should say enable graph view navigation. And then hover over the one just to the left of it and what you'll see is that it says enable background 3D preview navigation. Now the 3D preview correlates to this grid that you see in your workspace. In order to truly understand what these two settings are doing for us, we have to first drop in a component as if we're building a definition. Go to the library search bar and type in point. A whole list of different types of points are going to come up and be available to you. However, we are going to select point by coordinates and Dynamo will place this component into your workspace. In graph view navigation, the component actually sits in the workspace floating above all of the geometry in the back. Click on the component to select it. Click off of the component to deselect it. If you click it and drag it around, it'll move around the workspace. Now notice, when you click on the component, you'll see a couple of arrows, red, blue, and green, have showed up on the point at the origin in the workspace behind our component. That is showing us that our geometry is actually being selected. That geometry exists in the workspace behind the components that we're putting into the workspace. Now if we click on Enable Background 3D Preview, you'll see that the component itself has actually gone translucent and the geometry now becomes prominent. 
So if you do the same kind of navigation exercise, if you uh, zoom by rolling the wheel in and out, you'll be able to see that now you're not just zooming in and out of the components, you're zooming in and out of the geometry instead. The only other added feature when you're working in 3D is that you have the ability to orbit by holding the right click button down. Additionally, the other way that you can toggle back and forth between your graph view for the components and your 3D view for the actual geometry is by using control B. These components are preloaded with instructions. If you hover over the title of the component, it'll give you some information about how it calculates the information. So point by coordinates says form a point by three Cartesian coordinates. And below that, it tells you that you need to give it an X, a Y, and a Z. But if you hover over X, Y, or Z, you'll see that it also contains a default value. The default value right now is 0, 0, and 0, and that's why our point exists at the origin, where the red axis, the green axis, and the blue axis intersect. Go to your library under the search feature and search for number. The one with the icon that says 1, 2, 3 will be the one that just creates a general number and we can change it to be whatever we want statically at any particular time. In order to make a connection between these two components, we need to know a little bit about the anatomy of the components themselves. Let's take a look at the number component for a moment. It has a text box in the bottom left corner. It has an arrow on the right side. The text box in the bottom left corner is where we input the information that we want it to read. The arrow on the right side is where we connect or output a wire. It's called an output. If you click on the output and you move your mouse off to the side, it's going to show you that it's an incomplete wire because it's dashed, at least for now. And then click on the X input of the point by coordinates and then that wire becomes a solid black line which means it's connected information is flowing now we're able to change the x coordinate of this point by typing in a number say 10. behind the graph view you should see that the point moved from the origin along the red axis which is our x axis a total of 10 units if you go back to library and search for number again, there's another component that is called number slider. This one's very important because it's going to lead into what we're talking about in the next video, which is the difference between static and parametric features. We're going to look at these two new features once we move into our third video. However, before doing that, let's look at a couple of the notes that we should keep in mind about Revit and Dynamo. Dynamo is an add-in. It's a separate window that lives outside of the Revit user interface. It's important to be aware that Dynamo is constantly updating. The developers are very active. It's an open source software, which means that even the users are generating new tools every day for use. The best thing about the way that they've set up Dynamo for open source use is that it's operable even when it's slightly out of date. So if it's been a couple weeks since you got back into developing a Dynamo definition, it should still be operable even if there were a couple of small package updates. In some instances, when they go from version 8 to version 9, for instance, you may have to upgrade before you're able to produce anything. And a very significant note about troubleshooting. Visual programming is not easy, and I do anticipate that most users, in fact all users, are definitely going to run into an issue where they can't figure out what's going wrong they have a loop somewhere in the code or they can't figure out which type of surface to generate in order to uh, in order to import it back into Revit all of these things can be addressed in the very active community that's present on dynamobim.org/forums in the next video we're going to discuss 
the very intricate differences and likenesses between static and parametric geometry.